Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your Ham Radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. I was thinking the other day, as I have lots of time to think because I'm doing chemotherapy um, every day right now, um, why was it that when I tested a handheld, it looked relatively clean and somebody else tests the same handheld and it's filthy what's what's the difference one of the things that occurred to me was that the way i sample rf it presents pretty much a perfect load to the handheld by that i mean i use this little box that i made and the handheld is on one side the dummy load is on the other there's a wire that goes straight through there's no connection to that wire at all. The toroidal core siphons off some RF and runs it down to the BNC connector. There's a 50 ohm resistor here. Um, and this works great. It gets just enough RF to do the job with big stuff and small stuff. But the point is it's going into a bird dummy load, which presents darn near a perfect 50 ohm load. Others were using um, Chinese dummy loads, and I don't know what, I haven't tested them. I don't know if they present a, a good 50 ohm match or not. But at this point, I was wondering, what if I test, oh, this handheld or this handheld or this handheld. And along those lines, I thought, you know, I, I want to get two handhelds from the same company and see how they test. And these are TID, TID radio. I think it's H3 is the, is the number. So two came in a box. What happens when the load to the transceiver, the handheld, is not perfect? And I have lots of antennas that I could try to see what happens. There's more. I've got a whole box full of them. What happens when the load isn't 50 ohms and perfect? Does it still appear to be clean? So I have uh, two cameras. I set up the uh, second camera, um, which is normally shooting me if I want to, um, to uh, record the screen of a tiny SA. So I set this up. So I have a tiny SA. Now I need a way to get a signal into that. So I decided I would mount an antenna and I did on a stand. It's got a, um, a ground plane. It's a two, it's 18 inches roughly in length. So it's resonant on two meters, coax down and into the tiny SA. So that's my receiving system. Is an antenna located about uh, a meter and a half six feet away, five feet away. And then I would transmit with the handheld as we all would transmit, holding it in one hand and keying it up. Here's the handheld, hold it out here. Now, how would that look? Well, it's interesting. So let me, <laughs> let me just cut to the chase. Uh, and keep in mind, I've got two TID radios that are identical. We'll get to them in just a minute because there's, you're probably getting ahead of me. There's a big surprise on those two. So I'll bring the um, uh, results of the Baofeng, I just think I spelled that right, UV5R. And the signal strength that I, I used will vary just a bit depending on how I'm holding it. So the second harmonic on this one, using the um, 
different antennas, but none of them presented a good load. It was only down 13 dB. The third harmonic, only 31 dB. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a fail. It looked much better into a dummy load. I, uh, it was better than 30 dB down. Put an antenna on it and test it that way, and it's 13 dB is not much. So then I tested the other, let's see if I can slide this over, the other Baofeng. And this is the one that was dirty. Um, some guys tested it and it came back dirty. Uh, I tested it with its antenna. The second harmonic was down only 7 dB, which is nothing. And in fact, in switching antennas, I could get it where the, especially if I used an antenna, this is 280 megahertz. If I used an antenna that was closer to resonance at 280 megahertz, this came down just a bit and this went up just a bit uh, so that the second harmonic was stronger than the primary. So the Baofeng 5RM, no matter how I tried to make it look good, it did not. Now, the, the TID radio one, let's take a look at that one. I'll slide that onto the screen. Okay, so here's the first TID radio. And in general, it, it tested good um, with, with different antennas. This is about the best I got. And this is a, a remarkable um, second harmonic. It's down 52 dB. Now I could make that look worse by changing the antenna just a bit, uh, especially if I put on one that was resonant at 280 megahertz or 290 megahertz in that range. So that one always, keep in mind, that TID radio always tested clean. Let's slide that out of the way. This identical TID radio in the same box shipped at the same time. Second harmonic was down only 12 dB and I swapped antennas. I could get it a few dB better, but it was never better than down 12 dB, which is terrible. And you can see that the third, fourth, and fifth harmonic, fifth harmonic was actually uh, up just a bit. So. There's TID Radio number two, TID Radio Dirty, and there's the TID Radio Clean. Same transceiver, very different results. And no matter how many antennas I switched on, on this one, it's, it still did not look good. Fair to say, it looked pretty awful. So, what did I learn? A transceiver that looks good into a dummy load where it's got a perfect impedance match, zero reactance. Um, so R equals 50 or some number close to that with no reactance. The transceiver, some transceivers will look good, put an antenna on it where it has, in some cases, the SWR was like 28 to 1. Oh, how did I know that? Um, I got out this guy. And I mounted the antennas, lots of them on here, and looked at it at at, 200, at 140 megahertz. What did it look like? Most of them were just terrible. In fact, fair to say, all of the all but one, which was 18 inches long, 18 or 19, um, one or two were in the range of uh, two to one or so. But they were all over the place in terms of impedance, depending on how I held the the um, um, the rig expert. And it also means that how you hold the handheld is going to make a difference too, because there's no ground plane. So what did I learn? A lot of handhelds that look clean into a dummy load are absolutely full of harmonics when you transmit. I know that because I tested them, I transmitted, I had a receive antenna, 
into a spectrum analyzer, yeah, it's not the most expensive one, but it works reasonably good. And the and I bought from the same company, TID Radio, identical transceivers in the same box, packed together as a two pack. One is useless. I will not put it on the air. The other is relatively clean. In fact, I think it's fair to say it's very clean. One is absolutely filthy. One is absolutely clean. One is remarkably clean. One is remarkably dirty on transmit. A handheld that looks good into a dummy load where you're testing it that way, probably not a good test. And of the same model, you can get one that's clean and one that's dirty as I got on the same box. One 5RM might be clean for me and dirty for someone else. I get another 5RM and it's dirty just like somebody else got. I don't have a good answer. Um, I, I don't know how a Yesu ha a handheld stacks up because I don't have one, but um, I would hope they're better than these things. Um, these with one out of the four, only one is clean enough to put on the air. And the rest of them, no, I ain't going to do it. Um, what do you think? Am I missing something? I have a two meter receiving antenna. I also transmitted into that, looked the other way, swapped things around. I did everything I could to try to come up with a different answer. If the transceiver was dirty, it was dirty no matter how I tested it. What do you think? What what do you think about the way I tested? Should we be, in as a general sense, when we test a handheld for harmonics, should we be doing it with a real antenna or the antenna that it came with? And maybe that would be the standard. You test it with the antenna that came in the box. It's either passes or it doesn't. It's a fairly simple test that way. In fact, you could do the tiny SA with its short whip, come set it across the room and transmit and see what happens. What do you think? Make a comment. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. Um, uh, there are days when I cannot respond. I, uh, I have um, uh, another biopsy coming up on Wednesday, um, which is a really painful procedure. So I'll be taking uh, morphine uh, a couple times before I get there and lorazepam, I'll be told. <laughs> I've had that done uh, four weeks ago and the same procedure. So uh, fortunately, I uh, will be put in a wheelchair and taken home. I'm Jim W6LG. Thanks for watching 73 and please do subscribe.